you can you can get the word out. Amen. Easy Amen. enough. We can spread the word all over this area, almost within the blink of an eye. It'll bounce off off the satellites and they're all over this place. So help bring out the crowds. Monday night is traditionally the kind of uh, night, right, preachers? So we got a good uh, about half the house tonight, and we'll all bring somebody else with us tomorrow night. Hey. We doubled and we got the, got the house filled up. Okay, so work, 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 but especially pray, pray, pray. Amen. Yes. Many of you are here that, you hear a good message this yes. morning? Yes. Huh? Yes. You know who you are now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh? yes, yeah. Now to him that is able to exceeding abundant above them, all that ask to think in front of the power of the Lord within us, and him be glory throughout all the ages and worlds everywhere. He's awesome, God. Yeah. He's a good God to me. I thank him for his love and his, his great salvation. Uh, announcements. I guess the thing I need to emphasize: past revival is next Friday night. We'll have volunteers and, and candy and treats and folks out at five o'clock at North Franklin County Volunteer Fire Department. At six o'clock, we'll start serving those youngsters as the as the farmer do fire prevention and safety training for all the youngsters that come through. And then they'll have fun and games and bouncy houses. We'll have a block party trailer out there and everything. Be a good old three, four, five, six hundred children come through there if the weather's cooperating. Uh, we got a visitor tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Janie, Janie has already got the spirit moving back here. Uh, <laughs> 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 it was a loss. Same. Same. Yeah, I couldn't tell either. Big ball. Big ball. Yeah, I can tell. Any other word from anyone? <laughs> yeah. Somebody want to brag on Jesus? He's awesome. He's awesome. He paid it all. He paid it all. All to him, I said it left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Snow is beautiful, isn't it? Amen. What else? Well, my daughter walked the aisle this morning, so that blessing. Yes. And probably yeah. next Sunday afternoon, about 3 o'clock, we'll go out to Rock Creek Road with that good spring water hole in the creek. I know, they're saying it's so cold this week. I'm thinking, oh, Lord, do we need to wait? I don't know. Well, I don't know. Uh, the weather's going to go. The Ooh. rain comes at the end of the week. It cools down. It's supposed to be about 72 next Sunday. So it may not be any warmer than the rest of us. We're going to wait until it gets warmer. It's going to get colder, right, David? Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, yeah, it's <laughs> Ms. Jones' mother, Ms. Lila Whelan, was baptized down in North Alabama in January and February. And she told me a couple of times, I asked her for the second time. They brought about a quarter inch of ice yeah. oh, and baptized her and, maybe smoke, and they had to walk a quarter of a mile back to the building to get inside to get dry and warm. Yeah. Somebody want to sign up for January, February baptizing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they but, did but, that to me. But just think about it. Isn't that awesome? Was a that means she was committed to the Christ that had redeemed her and paid her sin debt. Anybody else baptizing that time? They have not been warned. It's And that reminds me. Daryl shared this morning. They go through the prayer list. But there on the, the bottom, he had a cousin who lives on the mountain, but he's in Texas working. Uh, David Porter in his mid to late 40s, I think, that, that died suddenly. So they're trying to sort out how to get the body back from Texas to here. You know, let's remember the Balkan and, and the Porter family. And I forgot to ask uh, Peggy this morning, she knew. Anything else? And Brother David, one of the Watkins boys' wives died this morning. It was Kevin Watkins' wife. Is that Kevin, um, the one we? That we, yes, yeah. that we have. It's his brother. Yes. And um, I think she'd been on life support for about three days in Major Drive. Mm -hmm. And if you caught the news, we did some of it just before we left. There was an attempted abduction of a child from oh, old West Middle School property. Oh, no. I guess sometime today, while the children were yesterday. 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 yesterday, and another child helped scare off, yeah. fight off the, the abductor. So they're, they're looking at it. Yeah. Yes. 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 That's the signs of the You ready for some music, Brother Bob? Amen. Thank you. All right, let's turn to number 
334. When Jesus died on the cross, the same woman of our sins, he shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary over 2,000 years ago. But guess what? That precious blood that he shed has not lost one bit of power. Number 334. The blood. sing a song without it having some kind of meaning. The name of this song is The Basics of Life. I want you to know I really feel like we're getting away from it. I want you to know they didn't take prayer out of school. I want y'all to look around at each other. We let them have it. And I'll tell you what, all we got to do is stand up. We don't even have to fight the fight. God will do it. We're missing it. I remember growing up, we used to go around, I visited my families and stuff. I want you to know it was a simpler time then. I didn't have all this garbage on my side, my cell phone, and the, all of this. And us kids was out there in the yard at night. Fifteen cousins running around. How many times has any of these kids got to fifteen cousins and the families all together during the week sometimes? I mean, it's not just special times, y'all. We're missing it. I want you to know we've got too fast. Too fast to pace. We ain't got time to dwell on the Lord. And I want you to know it's time that we stand up. I want you to know he wasn't a Christian. But Churchill said something when that World War II was going on. He said, we will fight on the beaches. We will fight on the hills. We will fight in our countries. We'll fight everywhere they are. We will never surrender. And that's what we ought to do. We'll never surrender to Satan. He's defeated and we know that. We got something to stand up for. So this week, let's tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Everybody likes to be loved. Yeah. And they're looking for something. And it ain't, it ain't our uh, candidates for president either. I'll tell you. <laughs> we 
We turn the page for a new day has dawned. We rearrange what is right and what's wrong. Somehow we drifted so far from the truth that we can't get back home. Where are the virtues that once gave us life? Where are the morals that governs our lives? Someday we all will awake and look back just to find what we've lost.
I'm so blessed. Amen. 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 Y'all are blessed that I didn't sing. Amen. Amen. Y'all are blessed that I'm going to want to preach. I know David's all wired up and ready to go here after hearing the good music. David McGee, husband of Linda McGee, pastor of Rorts Cove Baptist Church, friend of Bob, friend of mine, now friend of all you folks that have met him today. You break the middle of life to us, brother. God bless you. <laughs> I appreciate that. And he's right on. That's right. Amen. He's right on. That's where we're at today. Turn your Bibles with me to First Peter, the second chapter. First Peter in the second chapter. This morning I was talking about who we are in Christ Jesus. We're, we're special people, folks. Amen. And, and, and we need to understand that. We need to realize that we belong to the creator of all that there is. He paid a tremendous life, a uh, uh, sacrifice, in order that we would have. Now, this is this is what is really striking to me. Uh, I told you this morning, I'm amazed a lot. Whenever you read the Word of God, you get amazed at, at the things in there, you know, that when it finally hits you. And, and just the thing that He gave everything in order to have a relationship with each and every one of us. Now that's really something to think about. And, and we talked about how, how special we are and how accepted we are because of Jesus Christ. And so that brings us to the question of separation. And here in these first two verses of 1 Peter, well, the entire chapter, the second chapter, makes it clear that you and I, through the new birth, have a new nature, and we are to live in that new nature in the power of the Holy Spirit. I think one of the problems of Christianity today is that we try to live the Christian life in our power. Amen. And we can't do it. We can't do it. That's why He gave us the Holy Spirit. So that we would have the power. And without the Holy Spirit, well, you know by experience, we cannot live it. You know, you hear people talking about uh, when you're trying to win them to the Lord, you know, and, and, and one of the questions or, or one of the statements that they make is that, that I can't live that kind of life. And I remember several years ago, we had an elderly fella, and, and he was around 90 years old at the time. And, and I would talk about the Holy Spirit and how we could not live the Christian life apart from the Holy Spirit. And every time he would yell out, Amen. He knew exactly where I was coming from because he had tried it for a number of years without any success, as, as most of you know. So that's why he gives us the Holy Spirit. So in these first two verses there, he says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and the hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And Father, we pray that as we open your word, open our hearts and our minds and our ears, that we would be receptive to what you would have us to know tonight. Lord, we pray for the illumination of your Holy Spirit in our lives. And as we open your word, let us see Jesus. And we pray it in his precious name. Amen. Amen. When you were first born again, do you remember how great it was? 
Can, can you remember back that far, some of you? And some of you, it hasn't been that far back. But you remember how great it was. You know, you, that when you got saved, it, you just couldn't wait to tell somebody about it. Or at least to say, uh, you know, something happened to me, something different. Now I'm not the same as I was before. But it was a joyous occasion, you know, and, and it was a happy time. Well, Paul wrote the Corinthian church because they had become very carnal. You know, when you read that, that, that letter, well, both letters to the uh, Christians there at Corinth, you get the idea that these people were not Christians, that, that you couldn't see any fruit in their lives. But how we know that they were Christians is that Paul kept referring to them as brethren. As brethren. But their problem was in trying to live the Christian life with, uh, without the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and so he was getting, trying to get across uh, to them that they could not do it. And, and the life that they were living was a carnal life. And, and, and their first love, the Lord Jesus, was gone. And, 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 and they were separated from God because of their sins. Well, God spoke of this thing, same thing to Israel just before they went into the Babylonian captivity. And in the book of Jeremiah, in, in chapter 2 and in verse 2, we read there, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. They had love for the Lord when they first came out of Egypt and they crossed over the Red Sea. Uh, matter of fact, they sang a song of praise. And that was, that's found in Exodus, the 15th chapter. Let me read that to you in the first verse. Then sang, they, uh, then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has he thrown into the sea. But now after all that, it wasn't too long before they became complainers. <clears throat> Until we got, you brought us out, out of Egypt to die here in this wilderness. They, they became complainers. Does that sound familiar? Amen. Yes, sir. Listen, today real separation rests upon the fact that you have been born again that you have a new nature and you are now in love with Christ. And your love for Him makes you want to please Him. Why do we serve Christ? You know, I, I've run into pe some people, you know, that, that, that serve out of fear. They're afraid that something's going to happen to them if they don't serve Jesus. But listen, we serve Jesus out of love. Amen. Amen. The great object and the purposes of God is to have people saved. Not only from judgment and the lake of fire, but saved from the present world. The work of Christ on the cross settled every question that sin raised between God and our souls. We have been born again and no one not even Satan can change that. Right. Amen. Go to the 8th chapter. Remember, remember the scripture verses we read this morning, 8th chapter of Romans? And what Paul said? You read that and that gives you assurance that not only does he save us, but he keeps us. And nothing can separate us from the love of God. But let me ask you this, how's your relationship with your fellow man and with the Lord Jesus Christ? Look at that first verse again. 
He says, wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. Now, now, folks, he names some things here that when we get saved, we have to get rid of. <laughs> Listen. We expect God to do everything for us. There's some things that God does for us, and there's some things that we have to do. There's things that we're commanded to do. Now listen, it's God's, it's God's responsibility to save me. It's not mine. The Apostle Paul said it's not of works. He says if it was of works, he says, then we would be able to brag about it. But he says it's not of works. He says it's by the grace of God. So it's God's responsibility to save me. When I call upon Him, when I ask Him to come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, then He says that He will save us. It's God's responsibility, it's His job to keep me once He saved me. Amen. It's not my job. Now, a lot of people have this idea, you know, that they can be lost again after you've been saved. And let me, let me tell you this. If you had something to do with your salvation, then you can. And you are. <laughs> You're lost. But once he saves us, it's his job to keep us. That's his responsibility. But I have responsibilities too. You have responsibilities as well. Your responsibility is to be baptized once you've been saved. Your responsibility is to be in fellowship with other brothers and sisters in Christ once you have been saved. Amen. Amen. You know, we, we use that verse a, a, an awful lot. You know, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some men. You know what? That, that's not a suggestion. That's a command. We're commanded. And in the same vein, he goes, he goes on to talk about, he, he said it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of a neighbor. Amen. That's right. But God has a job to do, and we have jobs to do as well. We can't expect God to do everything for us. He has certain things for us to do for ourselves. And so Peter tells us some, of some of these things that we need to lay aside. Now, this suggests deliberate, volitional behavior. You see, because the old nature is not eradicated in the heart of a born-again believer. Even though we receive a new one, a new nature, we still keep that old nature. That old flesh, as Paul calls it. And that's the way it's going to be until we close our eyes or he, uh, we hear the, the trumpet of the Lord. Until then, we have both of those. And the Apostle Paul talks about in, in the book of Ephesians how that it's a spiritual battle that is taking place. In, in, in this world. It's, it's not a flesh and blood. It's, it's a spiritual battle. And, and so, so there's some things that we have to do that we have to get rid of because we continue to have the old nature and having the new. Let me styrofoam. If you take a piece of styrofoam and you throw it into the water, what does it do? It floats. You know why it floats? Because that's its nature. That's what it does. It, it floats. But if you take your hand and if you put it on top of that styrofoam and push down, what happens? It goes under the water, doesn't it? Until you take your hand off of it again. And then the styrofoam floats to the surface. 
And that's the way it is in, in, in a Christian's life. You see, we have to constantly, we have to constantly be on guard. We have to lay aside these things. And lay them aside, we have to keep them immersed. We have to keep them down. We take our hands, we take our, our guard, remove our guard from it, and what happens? It, it comes up to the top. The old nature does. He tells us to lay aside the vicious old nature. That's the flesh and its deeds. But you know what we do? We hang on to it. We hang on to it. it, it it's a terrible reminder of our old life, and, and, and it smells of death. You go back into the Gospels, and, and, and you read there. You remember when Jesus, when he went to the tomb of Lazarus? And you remember he said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out of that tomb. He walked out of that tomb. And there he stood. And then what did Jesus say? Loose him. Take those grave clothes off of him. And so they took the grave clothes off of him. But what about what if Jesus, when he said loose him, and, and, and they started to take the grave clothes off of him, and Lazarus says, Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to keep these. But Lazarus, you've been in, a, in, in the tomb, you've been in the grave now four days, and, 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 and they smell, and, and, and they're dirty, and, and they're morbid. And Lazarus said, oh, no, no, I want to keep them. I want to keep them. I've grown used to them. And I want to keep them around a while. Now, isn't that ridiculous? But that's the way we do, you see, with our, with our old nature. We want to keep it on, you know, and, and it smells of death. So how can we, a child of God, want to wear the great, great clothes of our old life? We want to hold on to them. Now first, there's some things that we have to lay aside. Now Paul, in his letter to the Ephesian believers, likens it to taking off of the garbage. Turn back into Ephesians, the fourth chapter, in verse 22. Fourth chapter of Ephesians, verse 22. Look what he says there. He says that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Put off. Now look at verse 25. He says, wherefore, putting away. And that's the same thing. Putting away. Taking it off. Getting rid of it. Putting away. Lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. And then he uses a different figure to describe it to the uh, uh, Corinthians in, 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 in 1 Corinthians. And in 1 Corinthians in the 5th chapter, in, in verse uh, 7, he says, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Leaven was the symbol of impurity. It represented sin. And when the Israelite observed uh, a Passover on the Feast of Unleavened Bread, he didn't eat unleavened bread. That is, he didn't go on living the same that he did, uh, that he lived before. The same life. It was a different life. They were to walk in holiness. So Paul is saying to them that when they come to Christ, they are to get rid of the old leaven, which is symbolic of malice and wickedness in their lives. You see, we'll never become perfect in this life. Now, if that's what you're working for, you know, lots of luck with that. You know, we, 
Now, now that's not to say that we're not to try, you know, to living for the Lord, doing the best we can. And, and, and then when we do mess up, we remember 1 John 1, 9, we ask forgiveness of our sin, knowing that He forgives us of our sin and cleanses from all unrighteousness. But we're not going to be perfect in this life. Remember years ago, when I was pastor in the church, we had a fellow uh, and his wife, an uh, elderly man, and, and uh, came to church, and, and, and I was preaching on Abraham one Sunday morning, and, and I made the, the comment that Abraham was not perfect. Well, the next Sunday I noticed that, that uh, the couple wasn't there. And, and so uh, the following Sunday, they never came back. And so I went to visit them. And, and, and I, I said, we've been missing you at church and, and uh, anything wrong? And, and he wouldn't say anything. He wouldn't even speak to me. And his wife, she finally said, she says, well, you need to tell him why. But he never would. So she told me, because you said that Abraham was not perfect, that he sinned. And I says, well, he did. And the Bible makes that plain that he said. Mm -hmm. And so he jumped in and he said, he says, the Bible says he was perfect. And I says, yeah, but I, I, I said, that's, he, he matured. He was growing in his faith. He was perfect. And, and he had the idea that we could become perfect. And we can't. Amen. We can. In, in the sixth chapter of Romans, you know, we're always going to have that old nature. Mm -hmm. We are always going to have to deal with it. In, in, in verse 11, in uh, the sixth chapter, the Apostle Paul writes here, he says, Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Now, that word reckon means to calculate. And what he's talking about here, it says that to reckon, uh, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed of sin. He's talking about the first ten verses. He says that, now, now read this and add up all the facts here and act accordingly. So he says, reckon yourselves, calculate yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin and alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Don't let sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of the unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but under grace. Amen. <clears throat> now folks, let me tell you this. Don't ever come to me and tell me that you can't do something, that you can't give up something that has been plaguing you all through your life. Don't tell me that if you smoke, come up and tell me that you can't quit smoking. If you, if you use profanity, don't come up and tell me that you can't quit profanity. If you're involved in drugs, if you're involved in sex or whatever it is, don't come up and tell me that you can't quit. Because here, the Apostle Paul says, you can. And that's what he's saying here. And you know what? I preached on this and I taught on this and, and it just went right over my head every time. Until about eight years ago, Brother Dave, I had a terrible temper. My wife can tell you some stories. Ray Gardner can tell you some stories. But every time I would lose my temper, you know what it was? It was that McGee temper. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> it was that Irish temper. I wasn't responsible. I just had that. And, and I just had to live with it. I had to accept it and go on. And just deal with it. And then, one day, I was had an appointment to go to the doctor to have a physical. And before I walked out the door, my wife said, see if she can't give you something for your temper. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> I wasn't a good person to be around, Brother David. Not a good person at all. I would argue, I would, if I'd find somebody to fight with me, I'd fight at the drop of a hat. But I couldn't get rid of it. And so I went to the doctor and, 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 and told the doctor what my wife said. And being understanding, she said, I can give you something. She said, but I believe you know what you have to do. Amen. I went home. I read the book of Romans. And when I come to this, it's like a light bulb. Well, my goodness. You mean I don't have to do this? I don't have to give in to this. Look at that again. Reckon yourselves to be dead to sin. Reckon yourselves to be alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Don't let sin reign in your mortal body. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Don't yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. In verse 16 he says, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are, to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto, right, uh, unto righteousness? But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that, from, that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Bring them, being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. That's who we are. That's what we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're different, folks. Amen. We're not like that anymore. And so Paul says, come out from among them and be ye separate. Because Peter says, you're a peculiar people. You're a set of apart people. You're set apart. Laying aside all malice. You know what that is? That's an unforgiving spirit. Are you carrying bitterness in your heart and, and a chip on your shoulder? Listen, I tried carrying that for, for years and years. You can't be a witness with that burden. <clears throat> Some people say, well, you know, I, I, I try to get along with people. And, you know, but oh, so-and-so next door, you know, I just can't. You know, I, I, there's just no way. And, 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 and I try to be nice to them. And, Paul said in Romans, the 12th chapter, he said, and I, I can't remember exactly what verse. But he said, if at all possible, live peaceably 
with all men. Amen. And there's some people that you can't live peaceably with. So you need to stay away from them. That'll help too. <laughs> Using some common sense. He says in all guile. Guile is using cleverness to, to get even or, or try to make a good impression on someone. He says in hypocrisies, envies, and all evil speaking. And hypocrisy is, of course, attempt to be what you're not. And evil speaking means slander. There is no room in a believer's heart for such things. They need to be rooted out and, and then put away. Look what he says there in verse 2. He says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. The greatest need for a newborn baby is care and nourishment. So that it is grow. You know, actually, that's what churches are. Churches are nurseries. Amen. Amen. You know, they, they need care and, and, and nourishment so you can grow. Just as a baby needs milk to get nourishment and grow, a believer needs the Word of God. Yeah. Or they'll not grow in grace and in the knowledge of Christ. A Christian grows. How? By studying the Word. Studying the Word. You know what? We have few people that, that come on Wednesday night, but just about everybody that does come, we have maybe around 10 or 15 on Wednesday night. But you know what they have? They have notepads and pens and open Bibles. And they take notes. And we'll have about four or five on Sunday morning taking notes. And on Sunday night, he'll be taken home. These people are growing in the knowledge of Christ. There's no growth apart from the Word of God, folks. We have to be in the Word of God. You can't know the principles of God unless you know the Word of God, unless you're in the Word of God. That's how we find out how to live. There's so much more and so little time. But let me ask you this question. Are you growing? Are you growing? Do you have that desire to grow and get closer to Jesus? Since you were saved, since you were saved, how far have you moved? Lord Jesus, thank you for loving us. Lord, you loved us so much that Jesus came to give his life on Calvary's cross, become sin, in order that we would have a relationship with you. And then, Lord, you tell us in your word how we are to live our life and to have the abundant life. So, Father, help us. Help us. Let us be reminded day to day to day to be in your word. To lay aside that old flesh, the envies, the malice, the lying, the deceitfulness, the hypocrisies, and help us to realize that we have the Holy Spirit who indwells us to help us live that. Jesus' name.